and today I am going to show you how to make pineapple upside down cake. Pineapple upside down cake is my most viewed video I have ever done and it is always at the top of my most watched list consistently. I get email from people all over the world asking me I don't have that kind of cake mix in my country, what can I use instead? I get people asking me all the time and telling me thank you and telling me how much their family loved it. Well, I did that recipe two years ago as part of the holidays are coming and the beginning of it is Jingle Bells. Well, I thought it might be more appropriate to go ahead and redo this and since it's so close to Easter, I thought this was a really beautiful dessert to put on the Easter table and super easy to make, so I thought I would just go ahead and do it again and then we would have just a regular everyday reference for pineapple upside down cake and nobody would have to listen to Jingle Bells all the time, even in the middle of the summer. So, this is how we're going to do it. Thanks, I got stuck in my head. <laughs> jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. No, they do too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I have here is just a 9 by 13 baking pan. And this is a stick of butter that I melted in the microwave and I have a cup of brown sugar and I'm going to get my hands in here. You don't have to, you can just, you know, use a spoon, but I I like to get my hands in here. It helps, I think, to help break down the, the sugar. And um, I think in my previous video I actually put this pan on the burner and I heated the pan up and that works effectively, but I have since found that I kind of like just doing this better because this is going to make the really the caramel part of the pineapple upside down cake and then this way and you like playing with your food I like playing with my food what can I say and this also helps you to evenly kind of spread out because essentially what you are making is a caramel and then you'll be able to feel if you have any um, hard lumps in the brown sugar. Sometimes that happens, you know, it happens to all of us. And then mine is soft, but and like you can make sure that all that butter gets well incorporated. And I just think it takes less time this way, frankly. Um, because when you heat it up on the stove, it really does, that sugar melts and turns into a caramel. And I want it to do it um, in the oven when it's making into a cake. And I have some hard boiled eggs in this thing here because I just made some. All right, I have two cans of pineapple slices because one can isn't gonna cut it. And you can fit three across and you're gonna have to mush them a little, but it will work. Now, I have reserved one cup of the pineapple juice. One can of pineapple juice holds three quarters of a cup. A pineapple, sliced pineapple, holds three quarters of a cup of juice. So you're going to need to use part of the other can as well. And in my house, whatever pineapple is left over is never going to go to waste because my kids are like pineapple monsters anyway. So when I was little, my mom always used to call my brother and I pineapples when we were being silly. Just a pineapple. Okay. So. Yeah. Ow! That hurt. The uh, edge of that can is sharp. I just yeah. cut myself. That's alright. That's the beautiful part about being human. You're self-healing. I'll have to put a little uh, silver ointment on that in a little while. Now, what else do we have to do? We have some maraschino cherries. I put one in the middle of each pineapple ring. And if you can, it's always nice when you can get them when they don't have stems on them. I guess I just got lucky because I wasn't bothering to look. Nobody wants to look at me bleeding either. Oh. 
And I'll have this recipe written and available on my website so you can go over there and print out a copy for yourself. So don't worry about trying to write this down because you know sometimes it's just fun to watch somebody do something. Okay, I'm just gonna put my pan over here because we're done with that part of it. And I have my mixer bowl and I'm gonna put the lid on these cherries because that's just a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, you all know that I use only Duncan Hines cake mix. I use the pineapple cake mix. If you cannot find pineapple cake mix, don't worry about it. Use yellow cake mix. Okay? If you don't have cake mix in your country, you can make a simple yellow cake. And you can use, like if you're gonna make a, a two layer cake recipe, will be fun. Let me grab the scissors, sweetheart. In it goes. And I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with using cake mix. I have great recipes for, um, for layer cakes. But this is very easy. Zero bread has to be my daughter's friend. I'm just going to take a moment and I'm going to put a band-aid on this. My dollar store band-aids. There we go. Now nobody has to worry about that. Okay, next thing, so we've got our box of pineapple cake mix or yellow cake mix, but don't use white cake mix because that, that won't come out right. Okay. One box of instant, instant vanilla pudding. Don't get the cooked pudding because that won't work. I mean, it might, I've done it by accident before and it wasn't a tragedy, but, you know. One cup of the reserved pineapple juice. Half a cup of oil. And this is sunflower oil. You can use any kind of vegetable oil and four eggs. And don't throw those shells away. Wash them out. Either if you got chickens, feed them back to your chickens. Or it's garden season, you crunch those up and put them on your flower beds or in your vegetable beds. And it will feed them calcium and they will be very happy. All right, now we're gonna mix this up. I have my beater blade on here. Start it off on a, on a one. And the reason it's gonna be squeaky is because that beater blade has some rubber scrapers on the side for those of you who haven't seen that before. And sometimes it gets a little squeaky. We're gonna mix that until it is fully combined. Smells really good. Smells like pineapple. it until you start to see that it has very few lumps in it and it looks smooth I mean that's when you have a KitchenAid you know if you look at the side of the cake mix box it's gonna tell you to mix it for two to three minutes but when you have a, um, a KitchenAid mixer like this you actually have to mix it for less time so I'm gonna bring it back over here move all this stuff out of the way you hand me that rubber spatula, sweetheart? 
Thank you. I'm just going to pour it on top somewhat evenly. It will spread out by itself. So the cake mix isn't so thick that you need to help it too much, but you will need to spread it and make sure that it's even. I'm sorry my arm is in the way, but it cannot be helped. Now I'm just going to, you see, I'm going to gently coax the cake, mix, cake batter. <laughs> One of Molly's little friends is here, so. Okay, geez. Okay, and whenever I make a cake, I always like to do this. Three times. I don't know why. Nanny did it. My mom did it. So I do it. Good luck. I don't know what it is. The good things happen in threes, bad things happen in threes. I don't know. My brother used to say it's to get the air pockets out of the cake. It is to get the air pockets out of the cake batter, but, you know. And um, I've got my oven preheated at 350 degrees. And because this is a juicy cake and it's got, you know, we're making a little caramel in there, I'm going to put this on a pan. Everything is perfect. With a piece of parchment, in case we have a, a boil over it, it's not going to get on the bottom of the stove. It's going to get on this baking sheet. Okay. Into the oven it goes. I'm going to set my um, timer for 25 minutes. When I can start to smell the cake, I'm going to check the cake regardless of whether or not the timer has gone off. Because your nose is your best indicator when it comes to a cake. It's a reminder that, hey, I'm in the oven, you need to check me. Because if you can smell it, it's probably close to being done. So when I can smell this, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. This has been in the oven for, let's see, 25, 30, 5, 40 minutes. I actually checked it at 25 minutes and it wasn't done. It's just right now. There's just a few little crumbs on there, but you're good to go. All right, now, you don't want this to sit around because if you do, you run the risk of having this not come out of the pan. I need to move this over here. This pan is hot. Okay, now I have a baking sheet that I have lined with aluminum foil and I have put my hot cake on it and I'm going to flip it. Get that out of the way. I believe we're good. Let's see. Okay, I need a knife. Let me grab a knife. A butter knife? No. Oh. And in true fashion, there's always one. But we put him back in line. There we go. Pineapple upside down cake. Beautiful. And I'm gonna move Molly's phone and I'm gonna put it right here so that I can show it to you under the light. You wanna cool this completely before eating, otherwise you will burn your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know honey, it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be even better tomorrow. It doesn't need to be served with anything except itself. Pineapple upside down cake, super easy, super delicious. You take this to your next gathering, get together, family party, and every time after that, they will ask you to bring that cake. I promise. Okay, I hope you try this, and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see you.